me to Philippians chapter 3. We continue our series this morning, Breakthrough to Superhero Champion. You are a superhero champion. Superman has nothing on you. Nothing. You are a superhero champion. And I want you to make that declaration this morning. We're going to talk about the things that we hear. But I want you to make the declaration. How would our day change if when we woke up in the morning, the first thing we did is say, praise the Lord. And the second thing we did is make a confession through Jesus Christ, I am a superhero champion. Or perhaps just to, just to bring it down just a little bit, I am a champion through Jesus Christ. I want you to make that declaration with me. Say it with me. I am a superhero champion. Now let's put it in perspective. You follow on the screen behind me. Through Jesus Christ, I am a superhero champion. Let's say it together. Through Jesus Christ, I am a superhero champion. And as I've read each and every week, a hero of mine, an earthly hero of mine named Wingy Prattney, a discipleship hero, one of the foremost leading voices of discipleship in the 70s and 80s, Winky Prattney, he said, those that God used in the past were just ordinary people. How many ordinary people do we have in this church today? Just ordinary people. God, those that God used in the past were just ordinary people with an extraordinary master. They were not all champions of great faith, but little people who saw their own need and put their faith in a great God. Can I say it another way? Put their faith in a great champion, and his name is Jesus Christ. You are a champion through Jesus Christ, not in your own way or your own. And I want, I want to ask you a question this morning, and I think it is a pivotal question. Do you want your life to count? I really think it's a pivotal question. I don't know that we think about these things in those terms. I don't know that there are many people who have asked us that question, but I ask it this morning. Do you want your life to count? There's a difference between just living, a difference between just surviving, and making our lives count. And another question is, do you want to make a difference in this life? I think, again, that's a pivotal question. Do you want to make your life count when I die? When the Lord calls me home, however it is he calls me home, I, I don't care whether you remember my name two seconds after I'm gone. I'd prefer you remember my name as long as I'm alive. <laughs> I don't care whether you remember my, my name five seconds after I'm gone. I don't care whether you name a building after me or a bridge after me or a sidewalk after me. Doesn't matter. I won't be here to enjoy that. But what I do want, what I do care about is that when I leave this place, when I leave this earth, there will be people that will be following Jesus Christ because of my life. That's how we make our lives count. That there will be somebody else who will be spending eternity with Jesus Christ because I walked on this earth. I want to make my life count. I don't want to exist. I don't want to survive. I don't want to just get by. I don't want to live 90 or 120 years and then die. You know, let me just tell you something. I used to say I've never seen a U-Haul trailer behind a hearse. I can't say that anymore. I've seen a picture of a U-Haul trailer being hauled behind a hearse. But I can tell you this, you ain't taking it with you. You can bury it in the ground with you. You can destroy it before you die, but you're not taking it with you. And by the way, God's not going to be impressed with the size of the home you live in. God's not going to be impressed with the kind of car you drive. God's not going to be overwhelmed with the size of your bank account. What is going to impress God is whether you're covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. Whether you're a follower of our champion, Jesus. Make your life count. Champions never give up. A champion, a tennis champion once said, and I think this could be said of anybody who would consider themselves a champion in sports, champions keep playing until they get it right. How many times have we seen a champion that, that retired at the apex of their game? They, 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 we, we had a, we had a, a, a quarterback that, that retired, had never been a, 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 a um, 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 in the uh, Hall of Fame, the, what do they call that? The, uh, uh, anyway, he was a champion. Uh, known as one of the greatest quarterbacks of history, but never went to a Super Bowl. 
until the last season he ever played. And he retired after he had won the Super Bowl. He announced his retirement at the apex, at the height of his accomplishments. He said, it's time to, to put it all in. It's time to go on, move on in life. Champions keep playing until they get it right. And can I tell you, spiritual champions keep playing until they hear Jesus call their name home. Amen. Keep going forward in the name of Jesus. You see, average people focus on what they're going through. Average people focus on the battle, focus on the fight, focus on the struggle. But champions focus on the power of God to pull them through. And can I tell you, whatever you're going through right now, whatever you are facing in this very moment, however fierce the battle may be, however difficult a situation you may be facing, Jesus is going to get you through it. Jesus is going to win the victory for you in your life. Champions focus on the power of God to pull them through. We've covered in the last two weeks, we've covered that champions live in their own anointing. Don't covet somebody else's anointing. Don't do what somebody else do, does. Do what God calls you to do and anoint you to do it. Secondly, not only do we live in our known anointing, but we face every battle with a sense of destiny. God is going to give you the victory. We go, champions go into every battle. Can I tell you this morning that the Rockets began the season with a mind on winning the championship. When they got up on that, on that last game that they played this season, they woke up that morning, morning expecting to be the champions. It's unfortunate that they had to go through Oakland, but that was their idea. Bat Champions face battles with a sense of destiny. But this morning, I want to share this with you, and I must go quickly. Champions remain keenly focused. Keenly focused. It's rare that a champion athlete will be a champion at two sports. There have been several who have done that, two or three that I, that I, in my lifetime that I've seen, but that is very, very rare. Most champions... Focus on one sport, and more, more typically, will focus on one position at one sport. You, you see this in, in industry as well. A, a champion of industry isn't a champion of everything. He or she is a champion of that which they are keenly focused in in their life. They don't look at this. It's amazing that, that children are, are drawn to the shiny little things, right? Right? You, you ring a bell and the child is drawn to that bell. You, you, you have a shiny new toy and the child is drawn to that toy. And if you have a toy, toy here and a bell here and you ring the bell, they go there. If you have the toy, then they run over to the toy. God hasn't called us to run after the shiny things of life. God has called us to be keenly focused in everything. Philippians chapter 3, verse 13 and 14, our text says this. Brothers, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. This is Paul. Paul, who was once the most ardent opposer to the gospel. He was an ardent, a dedicated, focused individual to eradicating the name of Jesus off the face of the earth. But Paul had an encounter with God. And that encounter with God changed his focus. Keenly focused to eradicate the name of Jesus, but when he had an encounter with God, that focus changed. And he is saying here that from the day I had that encounter with God until the day he calls me home, I am keenly focused, he said. Forgetting what is behind. And let me tell you something this morning. You can't change what is behind you. You can't change what is in the past. As much as we'd love to, as much as we'd want to, as much as we would give just about anything to have a go-back machine, so that we could go back and fix the problems that we created in our life, you can't do it. You can't. So Paul says, I can't go back and change the past, so I leave it behind me. I guess what we could say is, I learn from it, but I move forward. I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward. He is saying, I keenly focus my eyes on those things that God has called me to. And this sounds like it's the easiest thing in the world to do, but it perhaps is one of the most difficult, the most challenging, to remain focused. Jesus declared in Matthew 6, 24, no one can serve two masters. Either he will hate the one and love the other, 
or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. A superhero champion is keenly focused, and that means he is attentive. It means that she is resolute. It means that they are driven, and it means that they are all in. It is all drive. It is all forward. And and this doesn't sound like half-hearted, wishy-washy, or double-minded feeling or attitude. They are committed. James chapter 1, verse 6 through 8 says, But when you ask God, believe. You must believe. Don't doubt Him. Listen to this. For whoever doubts, we could say it another way, for whoever is not keenly focused is like the wave of the sea that is blown up and down by the wind. People like that, hear this, people like that are thinking two different things at the same time. They can never decide what to do, and therefore they often do nothing. So they should not think that they will receive anything from the Lord. A superhero champion is focused, one-minded. But a double-minded person, the Bible says, is unstable. A double-minded person is unstable. And the Bible says, not just unstable in 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 their religious life, but unstable in all of their life. There's an old hymn that we used to sing. Some of you will remember this song. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. Keenly focused on the things that God has set before us. The term double-minded in the Bible is a Greek word, dispatios. It's a person literally defined as a person with two minds or with two souls. It's interesting that this word appears only twice in the Bible and both of them in the book of James. James chapter 1 verse 8 and James chapter 4 verse 8 leading many Bible scholars to believe that double-minded, the term double-minded was was created by or coined by James in his writing. A double-minded person is restless. Have you ever had a restless night's sleep? What do you do? Toss and turn, toss and turn, toss and turn, toss and turn. You're restless. It's, It's restless. It's confused. A confused mind person Confused in thoughts, confused in actions, confused in behavior. A double-minded person is like the mythological animal that has two heads, one body and two heads. You see a picture of it or a rendering of it. It's an animal with two heads. And the problem with this animal is this. The head on the left goes left and the head on the right goes right. So if you're going in two opposite directions, where are you going? Nowhere. A double-minded person goes nowhere. Double-minded in marriage goes nowhere. Double-minded in theology goes nowhere. Double-minded in Christ goes nowhere. They are stagnant. They are set. They accomplish little or nothing in their life because they're going, they're drawn, they're, they're divided by two worlds. To be keenly A keenly focused superhero champion requires that we shield our eyes, our ears, and our heart. To be a superhero champion, we must be keenly focused. And to be keenly focused means we shield our eyes, our ears, and our heart. First of all, to be keenly focused, superhero champions will shield their eyes. Do not become distracted from the primary calling God has called you to. We could put it another way. Do not be distracted from the anointing that God has placed on your life. As God has placed the anointing of teaching upon your life, don't let anything else distract you from that. We don't covet somebody else's anointing. We do not become distracted. That's probably the number one weapon that the enemy uses against us is to distract us. We're going in a direction and then we see a shiny little thing over here and we move off to, to find that. But if we're double-minded, it means we accomplish, we're going in two different re- directions, and we accomplish very little. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 25 says, let your eyes look straight ahead. Have you ever seen a horse with blinders? A horse has blinders, why? Because that horse cannot be distracted by the things around them. If a horse, typically you find this a lot in horses that draw carriages on busy streets, blinders. 
because they don't want the horse to be distracted by the by the the shops on the side they don't want to be the horse to be distracted by people walking on the sidewalk they want the horse to look straight ahead the horse to gaze only on where it is going and i would think that's what god desires for us let the holy spirit put blinders on our eyes so that we're not distracted to the left or the right, but we move directly into the Lord. Keep your eyes fixed on what God has called you to do. Immovable, permanent, and unchanging. Jared Wilson said, if we aren't seeing Jesus eye to eye, or if we aren't seeing eye to eye with God, there's a good chance his eyes aren't the ones that are closed. If you aren't seeing eye to eye with God, I'll just put it another way. If you aren't seeing eye to eye with God, it isn't his eyes that are distracted, it's yours. Are you here this morning? I could hear some amens, it'd be a blessing to me. Champions make a covenant with their eyes, they lift up their eyes. The Bible talks over and over again about lifting up your eyes because we have a propensity to look down and see the peripheral instead of looking up to see where the champion, the power comes from. Super champions check their eyes for idols, those things that are distracting us. Children of Israel were often chided by prophets to get their eyes off of the idols and to place their eyes on God, fasten our eyes on the word. The second thing that a superhero keenly focused upon is shielding their ears. And I, I think this is so important, perhaps even more important than the eyes. There's always oppo opposing voices. And sometimes they're in the church. There's always opposing voices. You have a clear, defined direction that God is leading you in, and then somebody wants to tell you, that's not the direction God wants you to go. Or further, even worse, you can't do that. That's impossible for you to do it. You're too weak. You don't know enough. You haven't gone to school. Can I tell you? And I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not decrying or speaking about the not making education important, but I have seen people that have had little or no education do mighty things for God. Because it's not about our education. God's not against education. I think Paul was one of the most educated people of his time. And Peter, perhaps, not nearly as educated. But God used them both. But God is not opposed to education, but I'm here to tell you that there are opposing voices, and not just voices of the devil. There are, there are people that want to tell you what you can't do or to tell you that's not God's direction for your life. I've had that in my life. I've had God speak to me and say, I want you to do this, and I've sought counsel. Sometimes seeking counsel is not the right thing. Not always. But sometimes, you gotta, you gotta, I guess what I'm saying is you've got to be careful who you seek counsel with. Heard from the Lord. I go to somebody and say, the Lord told me that, oh, God would never tell you that. Literally, I've had, I've had pastors tell me that. God would never, have, would never tell you that. I know the voice of God. So we've got to be keenly. Uh, just as Kojo Bendel said, your mouth and your mind are the doors to your spirit. Your eyes and your ears are the door to your mind. Listen to this. Whoever owns your ears owns your life. I'll put it another way. Whoever owns your ears defines who you are. I guess part of the problem with a lot of Christians today, they've allowed the past. Paul said, forget the past, but they've allowed the past to define their present. They've allowed their past to define who they are. Whoever owns your ears owns your life. I pray that God owns our ears this morning. Amen. Proverbs chapter 2, verse 2 says, Tune your ears to wisdom and consecrate on understanding. You will hear what you tune into. You tune into the world, you're going you're gonna to be a part of the world. That's a good place to say amen. I, I, I have that right here in my notes. They will say amen. <laughs> Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21 says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. And the power of the tongue is not just the speaking. The power of the tongue is listening as well. Amen. There is, there is, if there is such power in the spoken word, and there is, then we should guard what we hear. And if you hear something that's contrary to God's anointing in your life, if you hear something that is contrary to God's keenly focused direction in your life, cover it by the blood of Jesus. And I'm not talking about saying to them, 
I don't, if I don't receive that, I'm covered in the name of Jesus. You'll do a lot of offense by doing that. But I can tell you, when I hear something that I don't want to receive in my heart, in my spirit, in my mind, I say I don't receive that in Jesus' name. Amen. And there is a time to tell them that. When they're calling you to go to a way contrary to the Lord, I think you need to tell them. I don't care who they are. I don't care what's in front of their name. If they're telling you to do something contrary to the word, I think you need to tell them, Satan, get thee behind me. Not, not really say that. <laughs> Jesus said it, though, didn't he? But, but to tell them, I'm sorry, but I don't want to hear any more of this. I don't need to hear any more of this. And then, and then thirdly, finally, to be keenly focused superhero champion will shield their heart. A commitment to the end. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 9, and I love this. Write this scripture down. It's, it's in the message version, but write this down. This is so powerful. A life frittered away disgusts God. He loves those who run straight for the finish line. I'll read it again. A life frittered away disgusts God because he didn't create you. He didn't bring you into this life to waste your life away. He loves those who run straight for the finish line. Michael Hyatt said, it's not your experience, your knowledge, or your skills. Your heart is, the, is your most important leadership tool. Guard, shield your heart. How do we do that? Ask God to cleanse your heart. Ask the Holy Spirit, cleanse my heart, according to Psalms 51.10. How do you shield your heart? Trust the Lord. Trust the Lord at all times, the Bible says, with all of your heart. How do you shield your heart? You give God thanks. We are champions that give the Lord praise every day. While we're before the battle, in the battle, and after the battle. Give the Lord thanks. And to guard your heart, give your heart to Jesus. Give your heart to Jesus. So, you are a super, superhero champion. Number one, live in your anointing. God has called you, and he's called you to something. He's called you to accomplish something. It is your destiny in life to discover what that purpose is. Secondly, superhero cham champions face every battle with a sense of destiny. In the before the battle, I'm going to win through Jesus. During the battle, I'm going to win through Jesus. After the battle, praise God, I won through Jesus Christ. A sense of destiny, a convinced, being convinced of something. Even when it doesn't seem real, even it doesn't seem possible, we are convinced I'm going to win through Jesus Christ. A superhero champion faces every battle with a sense of destiny, and a superhero champion remains keenly, laser-fined, refocused on what God has called you to do. Guarding your eyes, guarding your ears, and guarding your heart. Would you bow your heads with me, please? Father, I pray this morning for those that are going through struggles and difficulties and challenges, and I pray, Father, I pray that every champion in this world Every champion in this room will live in their own anointing. What you have called them to do, not to covet somebody else's, not to want to do what other people do. But Father, being faithful in what you've called us to do, even if it seems small in our own eyes. It may be, Lord, that you're taking the greatest, most, the, the most educated person in this world and you're calling them to sweep the sidewalks. But I pray they do that in a keenly focused manner, faithful with what you've called them to do. I pray, Heavenly Father, that every champion in this room will face every battle they have, will, or will go through with a sense of destiny, with the knowledge I'm going to be victorious through Jesus, that Jesus Christ will lead us from one victory parade to another because he is our champion, because God never fails. And I pray, Father, that we will be keenly focused like a laser, focused on what you've called us to do, focused on what we are. And Father, I pray that we will always put a guard. Holy Spirit, guard what we see with our eyes. And may we make a covenant with our eyes, a promise to say, I will look only to that which God has set me towards. May we set a guard upon our ears, keenly aware of who we listen to, 
and rejecting those that are contrary to your word and your will. May we set a guard upon our heart that, Father, we may be completely and totally committed to you in all things. And Father, today we declare through Jesus Christ we are superhero champions. For it's in Jesus' name that we pray. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. The ushers are coming forward this morning. We have one offering that we receive at the end of our mid-year missions time. We set a goal for May 26th, which is today, last day of our mid-year missions. That is last day that we will be promoting.